morning. <laughs> it's been a morning. It's been a morning to say it's Wednesday. the least. This is uh this job's like what 20 minutes from my house? No, it took you two hours to get two here. Two hours to get here. Alright. Let me explain what's going on and what the plan is for today. All right, Mr. Millennial, it's been an adventure this morning. I left the shop and forgot the most important tool in the toolbox. You did? My camera, I forgot my people. Mm -hmm. So I got almost back to the job site and then my son decided to forget his backpack. So I had to go back to the house, get his backpack, take it to school, which school is kind of on the way to here, but it's still out of the way, whole big mess. And then we had some issues with the old uh, the greaser on the Thunder trailer. We did. It may have been self-inflicted. Well, it was self-inflicted, but 50-50. Long story short, there's a great big diaphragm. It goes down in that five gallon bucket that shoves the grease down as you pull it out. And the bracket puts a dent in the bucket and the diaphragm would not go past the dent. Whole big thing. Anyways, we got the tracks adjusted on the B4. We got everything up and running this morning and we're gonna attempt to do something. So today's plan is to start getting, all the dirt's pretty much moved. We just gotta get our mess cleaned up and everything perfected. This section right here, which is gonna be the driveway, uh, it's actually gonna get fabric on it and get rock on it. We got rock coming later today. So the plan is we're gonna hop on the D4 and just kind of work everything up and into that corner. So we still gotta notch out that back wall for this little offset addition right here. We're gonna work our way up the hill and work our way across the hill. Well, let's do something, I'm ready to roll. All right, first thing I wanna do is cut just a little bit of a notch. Right here along the road, so these rocks can kind of tie into each other, if that makes sense. Oh, I've got the dirt on the road. Otherwise, we'll end up in a little bit of a goofy spot here over time. Got this approach sculpted in here. Very nice. Get a nice little transition up on the road. We should get some rock depth there. Getting some fabric laid out on it. Got rock coming here in a little bit. So the next thing on the list, we're going to go up there and cut a little bit of a bench in. We need to get the back wall of this little secondary garage addition 
uh, dug in and finished, then we'll work our way on the cross. I'm going to blow your guys' mind. You ready for this? Each time you roll down the hill, the roll will get lighter to carry back up. Oh, really? <laughs> You're Mr. Obvious today. It's crazy how that works. <laughs> Here, I'll show you how much lighter it gets when you're holding the camera. Grab the end of that roll. That's my motivational. Uh, that's my yeah, motivational. We're running today. Motivational. Grab the roller, that's my motivational boy. speak for the day. A speech for the day. See, you didn't grab the roll. So I just, I just use the use two magic. See, it just. just <laughs> we don't want two mics on the same Usually we got two mats on every job. It's not very often we got two mics. How well you guys can see it. I've got a white stake right there, and there's an orange flag out there on the bank that marks the back wall of that garage. I'm gonna try to cut a little bit of a bench in there. The excavator will sit flat, and we can dig that out. Head this way, we'll park Bubba Dump behind us and throw it in there. So that's what the plan is. Oh, come on, dude. Matt and Mike just about got all the uh, cloth laid out, ready for dirt. Got our notch cut in here. I think this is going to work out pretty doggone good. We may even take advantage of the old uh, 2D grade system on the Hyundai here and dig this out. So let me get situated, get the truck moved up in here, get this last little bit hogged out. I don't have the best haul road set up to get in and out of here because I'd say two, maybe three loads of the nose is coming out of here, but we'll make her work. Hopefully. That's a good trick for now. All right, see if we can remember how to use the system here. It's been a while, we'll hit this button here. Our screen pops up. This basically says we're gonna be running grade off the middle tooth right there. We're just gonna set grade right there so it's got to zero. A lot of you guys commented in the last videos that we need to set grade with the teeth like this. If it's calibrated right, it don't matter, it should be either way because it uh, compensates for the angle and the position of the bucket and the boom and everything. 
So as you guys can see, it don't matter which way I put the teeth there, it is right there. So, all right, do some digging. The major advantage of this system now is, is I have a reference. Like right now, I know um, 1.8, one foot, eight inches high from where I need to be. The disadvantage is, is if I track or move this machine at all, I've either got to swipe back through the laser or reach back out there and touch my point right here. You guys can kind of see I, I purposely put my point right here so if I track that way, I can reach back and touch this point here. If I had my laser receiver set up, I could just swipe through the laser and do it that way. So The system is definitely handy. And it's definitely a good uh, reference tool. I talked to Hyundai a little bit, gave him a few suggestions if they could tweak this thing just a little bit it would be super nice but situations like this right here it is definitely it is definitely still handy no doubt about that at all almost struck parked the truck too far away I'm gonna try to get you guys a good camera angle where you can see this. This number right up here is what is uh, showing our reference to grade. Like right now we're, see how it's jumping around there a little bit. One point, it's called two, two feet above grade. What I've learned is, is it's hard to trust that number if the bucket is in motion. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's kind of erratic. But if you stop, let it settle out, it'll give you a very, very, accurate measurement right there we're 310 slow so basically you do kind of the same thing with it as what you would do before you don't use it as a grain reference while you're moving you kind of just stop and turn the excavator into a grain rod and uh, by doing that it is actually it's very 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 accurate i wish it was i wish that number was a little bit more stable while the machine was in motion uh it would just speed up efficiency a little bit but either way, it's definitely a handy tool to just like now Matt's over there helping Mike. I can just reach down here and see. Um, if you check that with the laser, it'll be pretty much spot on. I'm recording. 
Does that mean we're gonna get the truth? Well, I guess that depends on what you're asking for. Is it close? It's actually within three quarters of an inch. That's close. That's close. Well, I don't know. Since it's not great control, it's great guidance. Is that close? That means the guidance working and the operator's listening. The operator never listens. Translate translation, about? excellent operator. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it works that way. <laughs> it's uh, basically right hover around three quarters, then I'm where I check. Well, that's honestly, right that's right there is three quarters low, right there is three quarters high. That's honestly kind of where I want it because I want to come in there and just kind of skim it off with a dozer. So, all right, so it is accurate. I found your replacement this little button over here. I am so glad I can find something else to do. That's <laughs> uh, how about pull the truck forward? <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Alright, I gotta move on down a little bit. This is what I gotta do. I gotta reach back out here. I could do this with a laser, but I'm just gonna do this for what we're doing. We'll touch that same spot I was at before. Reset that to our grade. Bam. Go back digging. You guys kind of see the process here and how the system works. Let us finish uh, hogging this little corner out. And I think we're going to run great on that main pad down there. Taking off the final fat. But don't stop pushing now. I'm making your people aware of what you're doing. Did you explain what we're doing? I said we're taking off the final fat. Yeah, we got to, we got to dug out enough of the excavator. We'll get the dozer behind it. We're going to take the big old green monster and hog some out of here. Let's Either that or we can take two hours on the four or ten minutes on the J, right? I don't like running this one. And Jerry's not here to kick me off of it. <laughs> this is true. Uh, long story short, we need to get... That half the pad's really good. Yeah, it's actually within three, on it, within three quarters of an inch on that entire front side, all the way over to the last flag and this back this side. side down, what, about five, six inches? I was gonna say four to six, so. Well, good news, I got just the machine to do. Yay. I don't know what you got out of it for. I wanted to see you. <laughs> yeah, you did. So I'll kind of give you guys a, Right here, we're within an inch and a half. Just over there is where we have all the fat.
Hold that right there. Yeah, it's the way it works sometimes, ain't it? You're good. I'll watch that line for you. Get here on your left. That ground's good and solid right there. Yeah. Good and tight. It sounds good and tight right there. Does he know how to dump the bed? I don't know. I think he's trying to find the lever and trigger one. Oh, we got a tailgate. We got a we got a new driver. Oh, here we go. Get this one busted out. We got one more out there waiting.
Mr. Millennial, our rock looks pretty good with one problem. Other than it's short. We just need one more load. Apparently there was a little bit of a misunderstanding between me and the homeowner. I, I right. said four loads. Somehow he heard three loads. Well, wow, that's how it happened. Well, he also, yesterday, I, I said 23s and he heard 53s and he was like, five, three. I'm like, no, 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 two, three, please. <laughs> so, it's luckily, I think they got one more load on here and we can now confirm four loads is what we need. So, all right, next thing, we got uh, all this major, all the big dirt hogged out with the big boy. We're going to uh, hop on the D4 here. We're probably not going to run great on this one. The skid steers, it's going to be a little while before he builds on them. So we're going to run great with the D4, try to get it within an inch and uh, call the pad good. So you ready? Ready. Hammer time. Things are starting to shape up around here finally, guys. There's, a, there's just a lot of details on this job, and it just takes a while to get every one of those little details right, but we're plucking them off one at a time. You guys may have shown in the time lapse or seen the time lapse. Our last load of rock showed up. I got the rest of our uh, matting all covered up. It looks pretty good. We could probably use one more load to gain some depth. We're three and a half, four inches on top of everything, but at least we got that there that's holding our uh, fabric down. Got the entire pad buzzed off. We're within an inch, which is gonna be a uh, good enough spec for this. Like I said, it's gonna be a little while before he digs on or builds on this. This is actually gonna be a true building, not a pole barn. So they're gonna come in here and dig footers and then uh, fill the inside of it with rock and then pour it. So we are golden on that. The next thing we need to do is address this back hill. And uh, man, oh man, where do we start? So. We got, we need to make sure we don't have any water issues coming down. Our ultimate goal is we're actually gonna have a berm up there on top where the topsoil piles at, going down to feeding a riser. And then we're gonna have a secondary swell down here with a pipe buried in it to catch downspout water and what little bit of water comes off this hill. So I think the first thing we need to do is hop on the old 850 now. And we need to get that topsoil up there just out of our way for now so we can get this hill slope back properly. Jerry got a good start on it the other day. And I'm hoping we generate enough excess dirt off the backside of this hillside to finish filling in that pond. It looks like it's gonna be close. If you guys remember, we didn't use this dirt for the pad because it wasn't as good a dirt as what the pond dam was. So we're gonna basically put this back over there to fill in the pond. The old uh, dirt swap around. So let's hop in the 850J, get started on that. Matt's over here now that our crossing's done. We're done hauling dirt with Bubba Dump. Uh, he's digging out that little section there to get that pipe in. Uh, we're actually gonna fill in that ditch the rest of the way up through there. Like I said, the big stuff's done. We just got a whole bunch of little piddly details to uh, get wrapped up here the next day or so. So let's keep chugging away. Well, after looking this over, I went ahead and just decided to shove this uh, topsoil up in two piles. One kind of on each end here. I need, uh, I need to kind of get it out of the way so I got an idea how this ground lays. I got to get a swell in here. So I got to get a little ditch down there by the building. It's hard to get a good sight line on it. It's staring through the, uh, through the top soil pile. So. Might make a little bit more of a mess to put it back and a little further to push it. But. Thank you. 
give you guys a little better perspective here of what I'm trying to do. So we got a topsoil pile on this side, topsoil pile on that side. The property line is basically the woods here. What we want to do is make a little swell right here to kind of catch that water and protect it from going down there on that uh, new building. So now that I got this topsoil stripped off, about that line right there, I think it's going to be the center of my swell. So I'm going to, instead of pushing all this dirt over there, I'm going to try to steal some of it and go ahead and bring it straight up the hill to uh, kind of make that swell. I really need to get this side done, get that topsoil put back, and then kind of work my way up, work my way across. It's uh, a little cramp for space here to make all of our angles and swells and drainage and everything work out great, but uh, we'll figure it out. I don't know how well you guys can see what I'm doing out there, but I pushed up the hill this way all the way across. I got to the end, I pushed up the hill the opposite way, basically crossed myself up behind me.
sounds like I said before, it is getting late. We didn't quite get as far as what I was hoping for today. I was hoping to get this back hill completely done. And we're close. I got it roughed in. You can kind of see it starting to take shape. We got our lower swell right here. Got to get the uh, dirt cleaned up out of the middle there. Probably do that with a B4 at a later date. Got this hill peeled back pretty good. Looks like it's going to be a pretty manageable, mowable slope. And if you guys come up here on top, bear with me here. We're hill hiking a little bit. You kind of see this upper berm or catch kind of starting to take place. I didn't do anything on the upper side of it because we'll probably do all that with the uh, smaller dozer. But this has worked pretty good catching all that water coming off the hill, basically directing it down to a riser there. The catch is I got all this topsoil on the wrong side of the berm now. So I have nowhere else to go with it. Now, I really can't put it down there yet. So I don't know for sure if that's the exact slope we need. I don't want to waste it. So I'm afraid what's going to end up happening, we're going to end up doing a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of dirt shuffling around. You know, another option is, I guess we can load it up and bump it down and move it somewhere, but then we're going to load it up and haul it back. So I don't know what I'll end up doing. Maybe flop it over the berm, just leave it on that slope for a while because I need it out of the way. I need this berm on through. Best idea yet. I'm going to go home and sleep on it. We come back with a play in tomorrow so that's gonna be a wrap for today guys it is definitely taking shape it is definitely cleaning up the devil's just kind of in the details on this job but uh hope you guys enjoyed if you did give the video a big old thumbs up I want to make sure you don't miss out on what it looks like when it's all done i can consider subscribing that way we can catch you guys on the next one later